say good morning. Good morning, morning. Alex. Jermaine, how are you? We're very well, very, very well, well thank you. Uh, now, me and Alex went to see the film, absolutely loved it, so congratulations to you both on that. Uh, you. Now, Ben, you play the company's CEO, Phil Knight. Matt, you play Sonny. Now, I know a bit about this story, having... Like, I love my trainers anyway, right? Obsessed. I have to say, Sonny's role in this, he was like the piece of the puzzle that I didn't quite know about, but he's front and centre, isn't he, in terms of how this deal came together between Nike and Michael Jordan. Just tell us a little bit more about him. Yeah, I didn't know about it either. Uh, ben sent me the script and said, you know, this is this incredible story, and... Um... You know, I I really just fell in love with the with the script and 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 it was interesting to kind of recontextualize Nike and where they were in 1984 versus where they are today and kind of we live in the aftermath of Michael Jordan and and everything that he kind of brought to our culture and uh, um, and kind of going back and seeing kind of that inflection point like right before and and how it all happened I thought was just really really an interesting thing to make a movie about. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, ben, you star in it, but you also direct the film. What was it about this story then that is so hugely interesting, really, that you wanted to tell? Why did you <clears throat> want to bring it to the screen? Well, <clears throat> one of the things I really liked about it was I, I was trying to make a movie that I wanted people to enjoy and go see and be successful that was the kind of movie that we like to make and go see, which is uh, movies about where the performance and the writing and the stories and uh, sort of generating empathy from the audience where they could laugh and be surprised and have fun. And hopefully it doesn't it talk down to them, but it's it's still really entertaining. You know, they're the kind of movies that Matt and I historically have, have been drawn to, and they've sort of fallen away a little bit, in particular from the theatrical marketplace because of the great stuff on, on streamers now. I mean, of course, you know, The Crown and Ozark and, you know, Succession, one could go on and on. And so I wanted to try to do something like this and, and uh, you know, make it work as a movie. And uh, and I was lucky enough to work with an incredible, incredible, phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get on to that in just a minute, actually. But, uh, but first, I did want to ask you, um, was Michael Jordan, like, heavily involved? Was he quite involved in the project with you? <clears throat> no, and I think it's important to point out that this is not particularly given that one of the themes of both the movie and the company that Matt and I started, it really kind of centers around appropriately compensating people for what they do, for their contribution and valuing them, that this is not the Michael Jordan story. He's, in fact, not even in the movie. Mm. Uh, for one thing, I thought it would be too difficult to get the audience to believe that anyone other than Michael Jordan was actually Michael Jordan, considering he's so iconic. And also... Um, you know, this was a story about the the world around him, about how he changed the world. He changed this company about sort of the people that that look out for for people in Michael's situation, um, and so the involvement really um, was limited to me uh, having the opportunity and being gracious enough to give me the opportunity to sit down with him and say, "Listen, the script came across my desk. Mm. I'm gonna, you know, um, first of all, I won't make it if you don't want me to. Just yeah. full stop." And second of all, if you're open to the idea, because I have to change things in order to make it a sort of a fable and to make it an hour and a half and not, you know, this sort of mired in historical detail, um, I want to know what things are absolutely inviolate that you can't have changed and that are important to you. And he 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 actually it was telling he kind of he he cared about others being mentioned as important to the process mm -hmm. among them Howard White who Chris Tucker plays um, uh, George Raveling who Marlon Wayans plays and um, and it, and talked about the importance of the role his mom played who's of course played by Viola Davis yeah amazing extraordinary. Yeah, what a performance. I just came away thinking, I'm going to be a mum like that. Yeah. Um, but now you two have worked <laughs> Me together. Me too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're all on side with that. Um, you two, as you mentioned, have worked together many times, famously on the Oscar winning Goodwill Hunting. Um, now then, Matt, this is the first time that Ben has directed you, though. He was kind of in charge. What sort of boss was he? It's the first time you're aware of. He's been directing me since we were in high school. I, I, today I told him we're going to go with an Easter theme, for example, and you can see that we went we went pastels. We went from... yeah. The pastels are you nice. See how I di I'm directing, I'm pulling the strings. Directing all the time. And you can see sometimes I make mistakes. Um, but uh, but actually, you know, having, you know, we, we were, we've been doing theater together since 1986, so... Um, so very so, old. Very old. Uh, but... So it, and then writing screenplays together over the years, um, and so kind of creative problem solving is part of our friendship. It's kind of baked into our friendship. So this felt like a natural extension of that. It didn't feel it didn't feel weird at all. 
yeah. uh, taking direction from him. Well, your, your friendship goes, you know, all the way back. And is, is it right, uh, Matt, that uh, Ben was always commenting on your performances at school even? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he had notes. Oh, he always had notes. <laughs> I had his share of notes as well. <laughs> That's what our relationship is rooted. Friendly, honest. <laughs> <laughs> You learn to tolerate that. You can really tolerate anything yeah. until you get through anything <laughs> that life throws at you. What, what we couldn't believe, though, and I mean, this is a testament to your friendship, is that you once shared a bank account back in your early yeah. days. Now, I, who funny, was in seems, control, or did we ask? Well, it seemed totally normal to us. It didn't seem... Well, I guess we'd never mentioned it in the past, and, and that story got picked up, and, yeah, we we never thought it was weird that people keep bringing it up, like, <laughs> you guys are crazy. Um, but, no, it was it was all the, the money that we made professionally from local commercials we'd put into this account, and we could use... That money was for going to New York and auditioning, and... and uh, you know, we were very, very serious uh, uh, kids yeah. about about acting and um, and and about our careers. We and 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 I think you know we really we pushed each other. I think because it was an odd thing being from Boston, having nobody in our families be in the entertainment business, be from a city that wasn't an entertainment city, uh, and be that committed to it. And I think our obsession when we met each other, I think I think our kind of individual obsessions kind of fed on each other. You really kind of bonded over that and was actually made it, it's a difficult thing, right, to break into. It's scary, it's hard, mm. it seems incredibly daunting. So I think we took a lot of, uh, I know I did, like a lot of solace and and, and reassurance in the fact that felt like we were in it together. Yeah, you know? well, yeah. well, I think you guys...